This week I'm gonna be making a giant coffee table from a cookie slab. This cookie is five inches thick and 44 inches in diameter. This was actually a gift from a Sawyer friend of mine, but you could make your own cookie easily enough from a tree trunk or stump. Let me show you the process. I first picked out what surface I wanted to be the top, and then I started working on filling in the cracks. Note, there are several ways that you can handle the cracks, but I'm going with the route of filling them in so that I have a smooth, flat surface. If you don't care about having a smooth flat surface, then I recommend looking into putting in bow ties or even leaving them alone. If you look at my cracks, you'll see the edges are kind of frayed and splintered looking. I'm gonna be using a tinted epoxy for filling these in. With that, it's most important to get the top quarter inch to half inch looking sharp and clean. Everything below that won't be visible. If you go with a clear epoxy so that you can see all the way through to the ground, then you would want to take more care on this step as everything will be visible. I tried a multi-tool for this job and was blown away at how easy it made the drastic difference. I let the blade gnaw away all along the top to make it look nice and smooth rather than frayed. And this even worked great on those thinner cracks as well because the blade was able to get into them. Oh, and this thing weighs a ton. I don't even know how heavy it is, but I have mine on a card to easily move around and use it as a seat for most of the build. Once the top was cleaned up, next I flipped it on its side to start working on the bottom. If you're gonna be pouring epoxy, the bottom needs to be taped off to stop it from going straight to the floor. This cookie has cracks everywhere, and I mean everywhere. Most slabs I pour epoxy on, I just need a few pieces here and there. But this turned out that the entire bottom side needed tape. I only had the one inch painter's tape on hand, so that's what I used for this job. But it would go much quicker if you get the larger two and a half or three inch roll. In fact, Tyvex house wrap tape works best because it won't stick to the epoxy. But I made do with what I had on hand and in the end, it looked like this. All right, now I'm gonna flip it over and work on the top again. I had to ask for help anytime I maneuvered this thing around. I also put it on something so that I could see if I sprung a leak, but fingers crossed I did a good enough tape job. Okay, this next step is gonna be a 100% experiment. I need to fill all the cracks with epoxy. That's five inches. That's a lot of epoxy and a lot of time. So what I'm gonna try is to try to take up most of that room with some spray foam so that I only leave myself about a quarter inch to a half inch pour of epoxy. I used a straw that came with the can to get in as far in the cracks as possible. Now, keep in mind this stuff does expand quite a bit, so squirt in some, then let it rise to see if you need it more. I was aiming for actually going over flush so that I could then cut it down flush afterwards. And I actually found it way easier to fill up the entire crack over flush, but then I came back afterwards and knocked it down perfectly flush with my multi-tool once again. It's a very quick process to simply slice through this foam. However, I didn't stop at cutting it flush. I again used this tool to gnaw down slightly, about a quarter inch, because I don't want this showing through to the epoxy I'll be pouring in. If you're gonna be going with clear, then you won't be able to do this experimental process. Or, I guess instead of filling the bulk of the space with foam, you could fill it in with something nice to look at, like river rock, sea glass, buttons, bullet casings. <laughs> really, guys, it could be anything. With that next step done, I sealed the foam. Regardless if you do the foam or not, it's always best to apply a thin layer of epoxy to the area you're gonna be performing the pour. You want to do the seal coat because the wood or foam will continuously produce air bubbles once you pour your epoxy. Then, instead of it looking smooth and flawless, it, it will be littered with bubbles. You can see for the seal coat, I'm simply using a foam brush. Okay, enough prepping. Let's go ahead and pour up epoxy. I'm going with Total Boat's Tabletop Epoxy, and this is a two-part resin that requires you to pour equal amounts of part one with part two and then mix it together. If you're wanting clear, you don't add anything. This stuff dries crystal clear, so it's the perfect thing to use if you want something see-through. However, if you want to tint yours, this is where you add it. Keep in mind that I don't want that foam showing through, so I'm going with something really dark. And it's easy to think a mixture is a lot darker than it is. So a tip to test it out is you can look at it as it drips off your stir stick. This looked black in the pot, but when I let it drip off, it's still actually pretty translucent. So I added more tint. Then just to be sure, before pouring, I even dribbled some on the foam to make sure it was dark enough. 
That looked good, so next I poured. I wanna thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp gives you the tools to talk with a professional therapist online that can help with a variety of needs. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it's professional counseling done securely online. The service is available for clients worldwide and there's a broad range of experts in BetterHelp's counsel network, which may not be otherwise locally available in many areas. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit betterhelp.com slash April Wilkerson. That's better H-E-L-P to get 10% off your first month. You're only supposed to pour in quarter inch increments so that it cures correctly. So be watchful how much you're mixing together at a time. I ended up doing about three pours, waiting about two hours in between each pour. And I can pour directly from the cup in the larger cracks, but then use the dripping off my stir stick to work it into the smaller ones. The stuff moves kind of slowly, but it does move. So pour it over a crack and let it seep in. Also remember you want this over flush. So fill up the entire crack and then put in a little bit more so that it kind of slightly bubbles over. This way, after it's poured and cured, you'll be able to sand it to be exactly flush. This will make things look like a mess, but I promise it's all going right at this point. I ended up getting inventive again when it came to that big crack. This was gonna be really tricky, so what I did is put a piece of foam here, tape it with some really heavy duty tape, and then this is actually a bunch of caulking to keep it from rolling over. And my goal is gonna be to fill this crack up first with epoxy, then I'll mess with this side later on. This trick came in handy because it has two show faces, the top surface as well as the edge face. And I am definitely making this up as I go, so we'll see how it turns out, folks. After every pour, I would put a heat gun to pop any air bubbles created from the pour, but then I let it sit for a solid day after I got all the cracks filled. Now for sanding. Before long, my mess started to look like a beautiful coffee table surface. With things sanded, I could finally start believing my crazy spray foam experiment worked. I couldn't see the foam through the epoxy and without a doubt, it saved me a ton of time and money by taking up most of the space. Now I did have to do some TLC on the edge base of that largest crack, but even that wasn't too bad. After I peeled back the tape, of course, all you could see was the spray foam and caulking. So I repeated the process. I used my multi-tool to carve back a recess so that I could hide all of the filling components. I just used a scrap piece of wood to create a dam so that the epoxy wouldn't just overflow to the side. And this worked perfectly. I had to let it sit and dry before I could sand it. But then the last thing to do on it was put some legs on it, which I just simply grabbed some hairpin legs, attached them to the bottom side. And now this thing is ready to be used as a coffee table. Okay, and I think the absolute last thing that I have to do is just add a coat of finish to make all of that wood grain and the epoxy completely pop. The simplest way that you could replicate this project is by grabbing a cookie slab and throwing some legs on it and not even bothering with all of the cracks. You can just call the cracks character. They will continue to split over time, but you'll be able to get years of use out of it as is. Or kind of a step up is that you can add bow ties to stabilize the crack without filling them in. It's also a beautiful look. Or you can go the route that I did here and fill in the cracks with epoxy. Maybe using my method in order to shorten the time that it takes you to complete it. I really hope that you enjoyed coming along with me on my, my experiments on this build. Let me know what you think about my coffee table down in the description. And of course, if you're ever in the central Texas area, stop into the woodshed and see this project for yourself. I'll see you on whatever I'm building next, guys. If you're looking for a next project, I recommend this coffee table I designed that has adjustable heights. You can fold out the tall legs to eat from it, or you can tuck those up and bring out the shorter legs for it to be a standard coffee table. You can click here for plans and here to subscribe to the channel.